I spent like $30 on uh, preparing for this video, so like and subscribe to inflate my ego and justify my irresponsible spending habits. I got a five pack of contact microphones off of Amazon. They're $15. There's like either Mandarin or Cantonese text all over the packaging. Are you kidding me? At some point in my little intro, I, I smacked the contact microphone on the snare and it broke already. So just a testament to how cheap these are built. Anyways, the point of this video is to experiment drums in the dumbest ways I can possibly think of. Some things I saw online, some things I'm just thinking of myself. And to start here, I got five contact microphones all on the batter heads of this drum kit and one on the hi-hat. So snare, high tom, low tom, kick drum on the batter head and then hi-hat right here. You can hear me tapping it. And what a contact mic is, also uh, in some cases known as a piezo, rather than working like a normal microphone, like the one I'm talking into right now, where I don't even need to be touching it for it to pick up my voice, a contact microphone has a sticky side and you stick it onto something and the noise it picks up is vibrations on whatever surface that you put it on. If there's some nerd who th thinks it's somehow wrong, I I'm talking in layman terms because... I'm a layman. So what I got going here is I have a normal kick mic and an overhead mic just so I can uh, show you guys what the drum is supposed to sound like. And then uh, maybe I could blend it together and, and get a more uh, usable sound out of these contact mics. And so far, I'm really liking how it sounds on the hi-hat. Really chicky. When you uh, use the pedal, it sounds like a like an 808 clap. It's really cool. Pretty cool. Here is what the kick sounds like. I'll show you guys how the drum sounds with the overhead and normal microphone, and then I'll show you how it sounds with the contact mic, and then maybe them blended to, uh, together. And now the contact sound. And now, maybe I'll try and blend it together a bit. Now, as you can see, I got my drums set up right next to my AC. I rearranged my room recently to make it better for recording. Overnight, I had the AC running, and so the times are kind of tuned poorly now. They sound... The low tom actually sounds pretty good, but the resonant head, you can kind of hear, is... Uh, vibrating with the kick drum. And now the contact microphones. Uh, let's see if I can blend it together. I actually had the contact mic if you can see, I had the contact mic on the snare closer to the rim, and I found that it, it what didn't really have a unique sounding quality to it. So I moved it closer to the center of the snare, and in that process, I hit it on accident, and you can actually see where they soldered the wire onto the, the uh, film thing that is the microphone itself. You can hear me tapping it. Let's see how the kit sounds together. As you can tell, I, I am not a trained drummer. I just uh, taught myself. Now, I want to see how it sounds on the resonant side heads and the hi-hat contact microphone I'm going to put on the ride. These are really stuck on. There we go. There's too much sticky stuff going on here. The contact mic on the kick drum was so stuck on there, I almost had to use two hands. So here's how it sounds now. Mm. 
Whoa, that is cool. So with the ride, the wire from the mic, I think is dampening the sound a bit. And the fact that there's a mass stuck on it like a tumor now. Uh, let's see how uh, the kit sounds to all together. So that's how that sounds. Figured now is a good time to share with you other experimental drum recording techniques that I've uh, found actual practical use for. Now these aren't super experimental, it's just uh, unconventional. I've put t-shirts on the toms and the snare to get a super super dead sound. Again, it's nothing crazy, a million people have done it before, but uh, for someone new to recording drums, it it's surprising how good it actually makes them sound and it gives you that really nice like 70s dry sound another thing is I, I i actually learned this from my friend chase pendleton he took makeup pads and when he put on new heads he put a makeup pad in each of his toms and basically what that does is it acts as kind of like a gate so when he hits the tom the resonant head vibrates and it makes the makeup pad lift off of the resonant head and then it falls back down and dampens it so that the drum doesn't sustain longer than you want and i found that that actually really improved how my toms sound another thing is which i i don't do as much anymore because i don't have a million microphones like i did at my old uh job doing live sound putting a microphone inside the kick and pointing it where the mallet hits the batter head, you can get really good attack versus what I have set up right now, which is just a microphone pointing through the porthole of the batter head. Personally, now though, I find that just, just the one mic on the kick pointing through the porthole is good enough for me. I don't like kick sounds that are overly punchy, like, a lot of modern metal stuff it, it sounds like a hit marker on call of duty rather than a kick drum but then inversely i don't really like a super long sustain overly boomy kick drum it depends on the genre where you hear it but sometimes i'll see people mic a mic um pointing through the porthole and then one just at the resonant head to get a the the boom of the kick drum and to me it just it makes the drum sustain way too long and it sounds like a, a cannon rather than a kick drum i watched this reverb video about how to get a tame impala type of sound on your drum set and they use an sm58 pointed at the side of the snare drum at the shell the mic was like under the hi-hat to me, I liked how that sounded way more than putting a mic on the underside of the snare pointed at the snare wires. Now, let me show you guys what's going on with this next setup. Uh, with this one, I'm trying to kill two babies with one brick. So, we got this. And what's going on here is I usually only play with two toms, so I got this rack tom that I don't really use set up right next to my set. And I got a microphone pointing at the resonant head. That is the stock resonant head. It's probably over five years old at this point. I actually saw this on uh, this guy's channel. I would definitely check it out. It's super fun if you're into drums and like ex experimenting, tinkering with stuff. This is the other little experiment I got going on. I got this condenser that is across the hall and at 90 degrees from my room i'm gonna record with this door closed um for a song i'm recording right now i actually put a microphone in the hallway pointing at my bedroom door and it sounded really cool so i want to see how it sounds when it's off angle and also in a bathroom actually i'm going to close the bathroom door too
All right, y'all, I readjusted the Tom Reverb mic, so I moved it back a bit farther, so let's see how it sounds. Gonna be honest, still doesn't sound too great. All right, so let me show you what I got set up for this next little experiment. I got in my desk, right next to my drum set, I got this cardioid microphone. Gonna keep that drawer closed, see how it sounds. It's probably gonna be really boomy. I got a contact microphone on the hi-hat and a contact microphone on the snare. I got them wired up to this ABY box. And basically what this means is I can plug both the microphones into this box and it combines into one signal that I then have going through my pedal board and into my guitar amp, which I have mic'd. Uh, let's see how it sounds. All right, if you can hear that feeding back, I'm gonna have to keep hitting the hi-hat to keep the guitar amp from feeding back. So I got a flanger, a chorus, a fuzz, and a compressor pedal on right now. Let's do our little experiment. <laughs> 